POA Talks. We're excited to help you grow 30 minutes at a time. I'm Andrew Cox and my co-host, Garen That's Stanley. Me. That's me. We are really excited to have our guest today, Pastor Ryan Franklin, a great friend of mine and also a co-worker. And our topic today is conflict and looking forward to his expertise and knowledge on conflict quickly about Pastor Ryan, other than a great friend of mine. He is super qualified. He is an assistant pastor here at the Pentecostals of Alexandria. Great guy, great guy to work with. Uh, you're going to enjoy him today. Quickly, I want to cover uh, some more information about Pastor Ryan. He is, uh, again, the assistant pastor at the POA, an executive coach with more than 25 years of personal development and leadership experience in businesses and churches. That's pretty intense, Pastor Ryan. <laughs> His passion is to see pastors and Christian leaders succeed in producing healthier organizations as they live out their God-given dreams. Ryan is considered among his peers to be strategic in helping leaders establish a better rhythm of life, see themselves more clearly, leverage their strengths, and build more productive relationships. He is a graduate of Concordia University, holding a graduate-level certification in professional executive coaching and consultation. He is also a graduate of Liberty University, holding a master's degree in Christian ministries with a focus in pastoral counseling. He is the author of several popular Bible studies, including The Bible Made Simple, a 13-lesson overview of the Bible and man's history. In the spring of 2023, I'm excited about this, being a book nerd, Pastor Ryan is releasing his new book, The Christian Leader Blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide to leadership transformation. We also want to encourage you to connect with Ryan on Facebook or Instagram at R.N. Franklin, and he also has a website, ryanfranklin.org. Pastor Ryan, we're super glad to have you part of our uh, talk today and want to jump into conflict. Uh, conflict is so prevalent in our world today. It seems that most people are in conflict of some sort, but they don't want to address it. So give us your thoughts on, on conflict and why that may be. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you, uh, Pastor Drew, Pastor Garen, for allowing me to be on the show with you today. It's a privilege and an honor. Yeah. And uh, conflict is something that is reality, something that's, that's in every one of our lives. And, and uh, if you notice, I'm going to look down at my notes. Yeah, sure. And I, I'm excited to see that. Uh, to see you using notes, Pastor Drew. <laughs> he, he picks on me for bringing my iPad to the pulpit or using my iPad for different things, but I, I have to say I don't have quite as good a memory as you have. Well, a healthy conflict, though. <laughs> and so I'm glad to see that, uh, that you are using notes yeah. in a setting like this, but I, but I will use my notes. So uh, excited for the, for the topic of conflict. And uh, it's, this is something that, ne that none of us can avoid. It's, it's something that is prevalent and is necessary. In fact, conflict is, is really a positive, it's a good thing. We need it in our homes. We need it in our churches. And, and there's specific reasons for that. So, so conflict is a good thing, needed in our homes, needed it in our churches. Let me lean in on you a little bit. Tell me a little more about that, why, why conflict is good. Yeah. Well, uh, most people will see conflict as, as, a, as something that's messy because that's what they've experienced in their life. Okay. But it doesn't always have to be messy. In fact, there's a healthy way of, of approaching conflict. And if you don't have conflict in relational settings and homes or, or churches or wherever you may find yourself, relating with people, then you have usually there, there's two main prevalent things that you will see. One may be that you will see uh, someone domineering over another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe you have uh, 
uh, someone taking advantage of other people in their in in their home or their work setting or whatever, uh, and there's no conflict stopping that. Uh, another thing that is prevalent, and there's other there's others as well, but these are probably two of the the most common ones. Is you may see a lot of passive aggressive behavior. Um, there they may be afraid to speak the truth and tell the things that that they that they really feel that will help improve the environment, or or they. Are, are they are, are scared maybe even to set a boundary with with someone and so they passive passively and aggressively uh, get their point across or accomplish their agenda when you know a little bit of truth could could go a long ways a little bit of conflict healthy conflict could go a long ways in in uh, settling some of those things in a, in a in a healthy and a balanced way yeah so why do you think what what triggers the avoidance then of of conflict? You know, if I knew that, I'd probably be a rich man. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably uh, if I had to guess from a psychology standpoint, um, you, you know, a, a lot of people uh, do not handle conflict in a healthy way. They don't know how to manage conflict, and so. Uh, even early, early on in, in, a, in a person's childhood, even they may have experienced unhealthy mm-hmm. and messy conflict. Like, you know, it doesn't end well, or you know, people fly off the handle in anger, or uh, there's there's erratic emotions that are that are associated with it. So, so naturally, if you experience that over and over again, um, you're you're naturally afraid to engage in that and it mm-hmm. and it sort of becomes a common norm for you as you enter into other spaces in life where you know y- you potentially could have healthy good conversations about something but it's natural for you to avoid them or do passive aggressive type behavior let or me let things. me dig in on that yeah. on what you just said so you, you from psychology standpoint uh, reference to a younger age maybe some type of experience, traumatic experience, where they maybe weren't in control of the situation, mm-hmm. created the conflict. So that's a, a lingering uh, thought process in their mind that when they get in a situation in which they're not in control, mm-hmm. they view it as conflict, and then they've been scarred by that. Exactly. So they just pull back from that. Is exactly. that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah. It's sort of like a, a hard wire. So, uh, you know, a lot of the way that we deal with life and relationships are shaped either one by our DNA okay. or two by our childhood of origin. Wow. And so uh, the, way that, the way that we were taught to deal with relationships, the way that I deal with relationships today, unless I've done some heavy work to, to sort of rewire that, a lot of it was wired uh, at, a, at an early age, usually before the oh. age of 12 or 13. Okay. I feel a little bit of a uh, conviction in the moment. <laughs> uh, so in, in that context, for me, uh, on the color scale, I'm, I'm orange and blue. So I'm super, uh, I'm naturally very compassionate or empathetic. Yeah. And so a lot of times I don't want to address an issue, a known issue, because my personality is I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And I'm I'm afraid of addressing it because I know what I'm going to say has that truth and it stings. And so I find myself naturally wanting to pull away from from dealing with the conflict. And with that, what are like some consequences of not dealing with conflict in our lives? Well, and and let me just bring out uh, a little bit more what you're saying uh, so that we can fully understand Many people, not everybody, are naturally compassionate. You are a naturally compassionate uh, person. I know. So. I know you personally. Mm-hmm. You are as well. Um, and and so, a lot of times when somebody is naturally compassionate, they struggle with telling people hard things. They struggle mm-hmm. with conflict, and that's what creates that passive. I don't want to. I don't want to engage in that conflict. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know 
I'm going to tell you and hope in this way, you know, not directly, but I'm going to tell you in so many words and hope that you get it. And if you don't yeah. get it, I'm going to get mad at you. I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody like <clears throat> me. Now, I, I've, I've got a learned compassion, but I don't have a natural compassion. And I've got to be careful because with that lack of natural compassion within me, uh, I can be too harsh with people. And so I've got to reel that back and, I, and, and you know, I've got to let the Spirit of God even work in me a mm-hmm. bit and have the fruit of the Spirit within me that will help soften that. And, and I've got to be careful not to be too harsh. You've got to be careful not to be too soft. You've yeah. got to trust your ability <laughs> to be compassionate with people yeah. and, and engage in that, in that healthy conflict. And so I guess, uh, let's see, I'll look at my notes, okay? Um, when people that, uh, if the, as far as consequences of addressing conflict, um, there's, there's a couple scenarios that happen. One, uh, sometimes certain people just kind of, uh, sometimes certain people get in the way all of the time and they, and, uh, and they, or, or they get their way, excuse me, I'm reading my notes wrong. <laughs> This is what happens when you read notes. (laughs) Let me just put the notes aside. They get their way all of the time. So Mm -hmm. you've got the the consequence of not addressing conflict is, one, they get their way all of the time. One person gets their way, and another person is just kind of sitting in the background and uh, kind of just having to go with the flow uh, of the individual. And, and, And that's, you know, as adults... We want to be able to speak our mind. We want to have a, be able to have a strong opinion, regardless of what room that we're in, yeah. mm-hmm. regardless of positions. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I respect you, Pastor Drew, as, as, as our associate pastor. You're, you're an authority above me. I respect you. But as an adult, I should be able to speak my mind to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and have, have good, healthy adult conversations with you. But when you don't have conflict and you're not able to have those discussions... Because remember, not all conflict is bad. It doesn't have to be messy. It can be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when we have that conflict, it, what it does is, is it gives both of us a voice and it, and, it, and it gives both of us authority in the situation and it brings a more healthy environment versus one person domineering over the other. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, a, another way is, is, is maybe... Uh, Maybe, for instance, Garen would have an opinion about something, and and he doesn't again passive aggressive behavior. He doesn't he doesn't want to tell me exactly what's on his mind, yeah. uh, because he feels like it may hurt my feelings or it may be abrasive to me in some way, and so he sort of skirts around the issue with me, and he's aggravated, and I feel the passive aggressive behavior, so I get aggravated, and what happens is is it creates a culture of a lack of trust and a culture that is very difficult to really thrive and grow in. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? It does. So I guess what I'm hearing you say is is that whenever there's no conflict at all, the one party feels like they're not being heard, which could cause a lot of negative emotions to rise up. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, very good. That's cool. So that, that's super beneficial. Um, when conflict happens, what I think it's going to naturally happen. You know, something is going to trigger the conflict, yeah. disagreement, mm-hmm. or a response to something that a decision was made that the one party didn't have control over. So we're back to that control thing. Maybe a, a big trigger mm-hmm. of of conflict when, when that happens what are uh, things that we can recognize or, or triggers to look for what would be the outcome uh, of conflict maybe negative behaviors how do we navigate through that um, you know first of all I want to mention there's there's a couple things that you got to keep in mind when, with conflict, and one is, 
it, when we're talking with individuals, we got to realize these are <laughs> these are real people. You know, mm. these are real relationships. Yeah, it could be our spouse, could be our kids, could be a coworker, um, and these are real people with real feelings. And we got to approach this uh, from a perspective of of a win win situation. And, and then another aspect of that is, is I know that all three of us have a very competitive nature, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and on a scale from, from 1 to 10, I think every one of us would be 10. And so we want to win, right? And when we hear conflict, we think, well, I'm going to... That's you know, right. How, I got to win. Even in this conversation, <laughs> we're thinking, how do we win these conversations? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the reality of it is, nature. yeah, it is. So the reality of it is, is, is we don't need to, to look at winning these conversations. We want win-win situations for us and the other person. Mm-hmm. And we've got to reel back our competitive nature in that sense. Mm-hmm. And, and <laughs> that's tough. And make sure that we're looking for resolutions to the issue and not just a win in the issue and what is better for the for the for for our homes what is better for the for the church or the organization uh, that we may find ourselves in 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 relationships i really like that look for a resolution yeah not a win that's that's something to chew on a little bit there as as you're watching that's probably a lean-in moment for us look for a resolution instead of the win which myself often looks for the win yeah (laughs) Versus the resolution. So I like the win-win. You know that that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, Pastor Ryan, what do we do when <clears throat> someone's emotions are just like all over the place? Obviously, you know, all three of us deal with people on a daily basis, and so we get a very wide variety of. We go from very unhealthy people, which is part of our job, uh, is trying to help people get healthier. Uh, as well as dealing with lots and lots of conflict, constantly trying to navigate that um, in conversation, maybe with parents or or other coworkers. Like, how do you know when someone's emotions are just out there? And then, how do you talk sense from a position or a place of uh, a basis, a foundation? Like, how do you talk to someone whose emotions are not on the same playing field as yours? Yeah, and I and I would probably I guess I'm to clarify your question a bit. You're you're thinking of somebody who is like really angry, mm-hmm. or they're just right, uh, or they're crying in front of you. Correct. You, you know, you've got you've got some severe, uh, erratic, uh, even possibly emotions mm-hmm. that that are there, and you know those are hard situations to deal with. But as ministers. We, we do have to deal with those things at, at, at times. And, you know, we're right. with people in some of, the dar- some of their darkest times. Mm-hmm. And with conflict in particular, you know, people get really passionate, especially yeah. those competitive yeah. people. They get really passionate about what they believe, and that's what brings that, that conflict in sometimes. And sometimes people uh, get to that place. First of all, we need to understand why and and. And for our listeners here, the reason that people would get erratic in that situation with their emotions or, or out of control with their emotions primarily is because they don't feel heard. Okay. Hmm. So, um, and they're, they're, they're thinking that this anger or this whatever uh, is the solution is okay. the solution to get your attention. Right. So in that case, you're not going to reason with this person, okay? You're not going to you're not going to be able to talk sense into this person in that moment. Not until they come down from that emotion. Now, you a person can come down from that emotion fairly quickly if you do the right thing. And the right thing is is approach them with with uh active listening. And active listening is um you know, listen to what they're telling you because they're they're mad or they're or, or angry or whatever and they're 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 trying to uh, get something across to you mm-hmm. listen to what they're saying and literally repeat back what they're saying so uh, or 
it, or maybe pick out an emotion within, if, if they're not really saying a lot that you can pick out, pick out an emotion. And, and you know, Garen, you really look, you really look angry in this moment. And I, right. I, I, I sense some, I sense that you're really upset. And you just call it out. You just call that out. So you just address it. You're not addressing it. Okay. You're, you're, you're I calling. Identify it. You're identifying it. Okay. That's it. That's it. You're identifying the emotion. And if they're, if they're saying something to you that makes sense, literally repeating it back to them helps them slow down and, and understand. They start feeling heard. They know that you heard what they mm -hmm. said enough okay. to repeat it back to them. Or they, or they know that you got their emotion that they're trying to express to them. Hmm. And it may sound elementary. It may sound overly simple, and to us it would be in this moment, but to a person who is, their emotions are just mm -hmm. uh, way out there, it's not. And that's really the only thing that's going to draw that person, that's that so individual good. down. That is so good. And, and it doesn't take long. So once they feel heard, a lot of times they're, they're going to come down, they're going to, you know, the adrenaline's going to, going to drop, and, and the tempo of the room is going to drop a bit. And, and they're going to be able to talk, you're going to begin to be able to talk some, some, talk through some things or talk some sense into them in some, some form or fashion or, or even empathize with them and, and help them through the issue. Uh, if it's, if it's conflict and, and things that you need to get across to the person, you know, at that point you're able to move into that. But if their emotion is out of, is out of control, there's no way you're going to get anything across to them, any reason or anything like that, until they come down from that, from that particular emotion. It sounds like a really good thing to apply in parenting as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I have a two-year-old that I can, yeah. I can practice that. I'm trying on. this tonight. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of practice, so uh, we kind of understand to a degree why conflict happens. Um, are there some steps? That, that you've used, that you have, that may, maybe a broad spectrum that yeah. you could share briefly, or, or maybe just a quick tip on, because I love why, but I, I don't want to know why without what can I do to fix it, or, sure. or how, do I, how do I engage uh, appropriately in sure. the conflict? And I would say that, that uh, I've got something here that I prepared that uh, that I'll go through. This is this is a an eight step conflict resolution method by Dr. John Townsend. Uh, phenomenal stuff. He's the guy that wrote all the boundaries books. Okay. Um, but this is an this is an eight step conflict resolution. But it works with any hard conversations that you have to have. So maybe you're maybe you're delegating something to somebody that you know is going to be difficult for them to take. You know, they may not want to take it on, but you know you've, you, you need to delegate this. And so this is an approach you can do. Maybe, it's, maybe it is truly conflict. You're having to work through something. Or, uh, or maybe you're having to address somebody that reports to you in ministry or whatever and, and, and address something difficult. This is, uh, this is an eight-step I can scroll down here and get to it. It's an eight-step method that I have found to be to be to work 100% of the time. Oh wow! Now there's there's lots of methods out there. There's lots of good ways of of handling this, but I have used this uh, a million times and it works every single time. I'm in. So I'm listening. Uh, eight steps. Number one, give grace. Okay. And so in a very short form, about 30 seconds, communicate acceptance to the person, communicate, validate them in the moment, tell them how much you love them, tell them the good things that, that, uh, that you appreciate about them. Don't, don't draw it on and on and on, but about 30 seconds, you know, you're, you're communicating something to them. And what that does is the psychology behind that is it, is it sort of kills the judge in them. Okay. So everybody's mm -hmm. got a judge in them. You don't, yeah, yeah. don't want to be told yeah. something that you have to do or, <laughs> or that's hard news to hear. So yeah. this kind of kills, kills the judge in them. You're preparing them for the truth. And they, they may even realize that you're preparing them for, for, for some hard news, yet it still works. Because if, if you have trust with them and they trust you, 
um, and they trust what you're saying is true, it still works. And then the second thing, number two, is give truth. So uh, again, don't belabor this. This is where a lot of people get in trouble when they're doing conflict is they, they go on and on about the truth and they're kind of skirting around it and they, they you try never to clean paint the dishes, you never <laughs> you never pick up. So this <laughs> yeah. So this is this is getting straight forward. This this is the problem. Or this is the whatever I want you to do, or this is whatever the whatever the truth is, you gotta state it. State the hard news quickly and don't and don't belabor it. Okay. Number three is on part of the problem. So here's my contribution to the problem. If you if you if you're talking about conflict, there's always something within that that you can own. Maybe you didn't address it quick enough. Um, maybe you could have addressed it sooner. Maybe you was maybe you weren't as clear that with makes sense. with the instructions mm-hmm. that you could have been. Mm-hmm. And so figure out something. You can figure out something. You're not perfect. And so yeah. you can figure out something yeah. that you can own in this issue. And that just, that just shows the individual that you're, you're not just domineering over them. You're taking some responsibility in you're this You're not just casting blame. Exactly, exactly. You're looking for the resolution, not the win. Exactly, yep. yes. And then step four, give them a chance to talk. You're basically giving them a day in court. You know, they, they give what's, what's on their mind. You're, uh, you're allowing them to express their perspective on it. Uh, you're hearing them out. Um, and a lot of times that's truly really important for somebody to come to an acceptance with, with, some, with the conflict that you're, or the, or the change that you're about to present to them is, is that, uh, that you give them that chance to, be, to feel heard and and it's and and also you have to keep in mind that there's a possibility that you may learn something yeah if you truly let them talk and you truly sure. listen to them you may learn a different perspective mm-hmm. that may change your mind yeah. yeah in this in this thing and that's really important but the really the the most important thing in that aspect is just that they feel heard and then the fifth thing is to request a win-win change again uh, this is not about me. This is about a resolution mm-hmm. to the to the circumstances. So you want a you want to present a solution that is that is best for the home or best for the church or the organization in which we want everybody which, to win. You, you want everybody to win. You want that person that you're talking to to win, and and then you to win as well. And so you you request the change in sort of a win win situation. And then the sixth step is state the consequences. If you've had to address this uh, um, uh, before or multiple times (laughs) and they are still not uh, doing what's necessary to move forward, uh, you have to state a consequence and something that you're willing to to stand behind. Maybe that's a, uh, a, you know, if it's a work setting, maybe that's writing them up or maybe it's, um, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, if if you are not able to uh, fulfill this particular thing, I may have to uh, move someone else in to this role or this position. Yeah, um, you have to state stay a, a consequence. And then number seven is give grace again, and this is where you let them know again that you love them, you're for them, you're communicating acceptance to them. You want to walk away from this conversation with killing that killing that judge in mm-hmm. them and and them knowing that you that you love and care for them and then the eighth step is 24 hours later mm-hmm. give grace again mm-hmm. so oh, the next okay. day uh huh. it's likely they could wake up the next day and play in those the scenario of the conflict yeah. in their uh, head yeah 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 and uh and and that judge is rearing up in them again and so just check in with them and communicate acceptance and love and grace again and a lot of times you know if if you do that the next day you're you're going to be good from from there on out and and if there is a major problem you're going to identify it with that check in and that eighth yeah uh step that that eighth step now sometimes we're stressed and sometimes we we get to a place uh or, or we're caught off guard and you know, 
we're we're here having a good interview, and we don't we don't really have time to prepare yeah. and read eight steps and mm-hmm. refresh ourselves. So on in that. the moment, and so we uh, we get caught off guard, and we're in the moment, mm-hmm. and and you don't remember these eight steps, and you're fumbling around in your head trying to figure that out. I don't have as good a memory as you. You probably remember them really <laughs> well, uh, but. Uh, what do you do in that circumstance? And and I have I have a uh, a very simple formula that I use if I'm caught off guard, and that is truth sandwiched between grace. Mm-hmm. Truth sandwiched between grace. Okay. Truth sandwiched between grace. So communicate grace. Mm-hmm. You're killing the judge in them. Communicate the truth. Very simple, simply, uh, don't belabor it, short form, what the truth is, and then grace again. So if I can't remember all of those other steps of... Grace, of, truth, grace. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your natural instinct is going to kick in in the middle yeah. of that. But if you can remember grace, truth, and grace, mm-hmm. that's truth sandwiched between grace, yeah, yeah. then uh, you likely will have a... a good conflict resolution with with someone or a good uh, if, if you're having a tough conversation in the immediacy of the moment you're, you're likely to have a good outcome if you just remember grace truth and grace and, and here's the psychology behind that um, grace only is is uh, not going to produce change mm-hmm. you're you're gonna you're gonna leave your your organization is going to be immature if you're just if, if you're just a grace-only kind okay. of a person, your, your relationships are going to be immature. Truth-only is, is going to be too harsh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get messy quick. Mm-hmm. But when you combine the two, truth and grace, when you sandwich truth between grace, um, you're likely going to have a good conflict uh, resolution and and a good outcome to that. That's very good. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. Remember that true sandwich between grace. That's strong. Uh, rapid fire, real quick. Um, I love stories of real life examples. And for our audience, I've heard one side of this story, so I'm anxious to hear uh, Ryan's side of this story. Uh, Pastor Ryan, why don't you share how you used your 100% method to navigate some conflict with our, our host, Garen Stanley, here. <laughs> this uh, is only 50% of the story. They, so. they have, they have <laughs> from what I understand, they have a great uh, story on conflict. Rapid uh, fire. I, uh, tell us about that real quick. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the Dairy Queen story. I'm talking story. about the Dairy Queen story. <laughs> Folks, he left me at Dairy Queen. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who leaves their friend at Dairy Queen? <laughs> Okay. So give, give us the the sixty second version on that. So how how old were we? Uh, I was time? I think seventeen or eighteen. So that was uh, twelve, thirteen yeah. years ago. Mm-hmm. We uh, we had we had gotten together, started meeting a few times, uh, and I was mentoring you. It's it's very immature. Unquote, very quote immature. unquote mentoring you <laughs> in my immaturity, and uh, and we would meet at Dairy Queen, and. Reese's Blizzard, uh, chocolate chip cookie dough, so and, good. A, and a sugar-free Dilly Bar. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and so we would meet and we would talk about a book or or something, yeah. various things of life, and and uh, and I think if I remember correctly, you were late one one week, <laughs> and then the next week, next time we were going to meet, you were late again. Yeah, and and this time it kind of extended a little bit. It did, and uh, and so. I think it was like maybe 30 minutes past our meeting time. Yeah. And so I just left. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was not waiting anymore. No, you and, weren't. <laughs> and I think, and I really think looking back, that was probably the, a, a reasonable thing that I just left after 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but you were so a that bit was shocked. The I was still coming. of it. I was still coming. <laughs> he though. was still coming, even was, after 30 minutes. I was still the on the way, side. man. He was shocked that I would have <laughs> left after 30 minutes of waiting on him. I was on the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and here's where it goes downhill, though, uh, because 
as we were having the conflict resolution in the story, yeah, we worked through the grace, I, man. I was not so versed on the John Townsend uh-huh. method of conflict resolution. I was the test dummy. And uh, <laughs> and if I remember correctly, I don't know how all this went down, but ultimately I ended up calling you a bucket of holes. Bucket full of holes. <laughs> he said, "I'm not going to waste my time investing in buckets full of holes." And, I said, <laughs> and that's the story I heard. <laughs> yeah. And so, folks, let me tell you. This is an example of no compassion. <laughs> and, so and plenty I'm, of truth, no grace. <laughs> all truth and, and no grace. And that's where I was at that time, and, and absolutely wrong. I should have never done that. In, in fact, I didn't, I didn't specifically <laughs> call you a bucket of holes. I passive-aggressively <laughs> called you I picked it a up. bucket of holes, but he picked it up. <laughs> and that was, a, that was a very uh, funny story. But I, I've yeah. learned a lot since then. So have I. I'm on time. <laughs> I'm on time now. I, I don't think you ever missed a, another another appointment. We we survived that. Our relationship survived it surprisingly, yep. and he he learned a lesson and was never late. Later on in life, I I learned a lesson and realized that I've got to sandwich that truth between yeah. between grace and uh, and, a, and a lot better outcomes can can happen. But thankfully, yeah. we we made it through that one. Folks, he writes a book now. I mean, so come on, so. <laughs> Obviously, as we start winding down, I just wanted to ask you, can you give like the listeners and viewers a uh, sneak preview of, of what's in the book to come? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. That is, uh, it's the Christian Leader Blueprint, um, and I've got a short guide on my website right now. It's sort of, sort of a short version of the Christian Leader Blueprint that you can go on my website, ryanfranklin.org, and you can download that, that short guide, and it kind of gives a, an overview of what the book uh, would be. Um, the book will actually go into each one of the principles in depth. And there's four main parts of the book, and that is to establish a better rhythm of life, to see yourself more clearly, to uh, leverage your strengths, and to build more productive relationships. And that's what it's all about. Right. Is That's what conflict resolution yeah. is about. That's yeah. what if we have a healthy rhythm of life, it's going to help us with our relationships. If we see ourselves more clearly, it's going to help us with our relationships. If we uh, leverage our strengths effectively, it's going to help. Um, but ultimately, uh, these principles are intended to help you become a more effective leader, obviously, but also to enjoy leadership. Relationship mm-hmm. issues, conflict in, in particular, is something that makes leadership tough. Mm-hmm. And when in a day and age that we live in, when anxiety is high, stress is high, you know, I don't know about you guys, but that's when the worst of me comes out, when I'm stressed and when I'm tired. Sure, yeah. yeah. And, and so these are principles in this book that will help a, a leader grow in these particular areas of their life and, and sort of soften those things so that they are more effective with, with, re, with leadership relationships. That's yeah, all. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Pastor Ryan, thanks so much for being with us today. Your time's uh, very valuable to us, so thank you. Uh, one final question, uh, Batman or Superman? You know, I thought about that, and uh, I, I could care less about either one of them. <sighs> but uh, f- from, a principle, from a principle base... Uh, I would say Superman, just from the sheer fact of, of I like the fact that he doesn't wear a mask. Mm. And I think uh, it's, okay. really, it's really important that we all... Okay. <laughs> you went deep on us. <laughs> okay. It's really important <laughs> that we all show our true face. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to say Superman. <laughs> all right. Superman, good deal. Well, thanks so much for being part of our conversation today here at POA Talks. Again, check out Ryan Franklin. Dot org. All of his information is there, his podcast information, the studies that he's done, the, the new book that's coming out in the early spring, all of that is there. If you enjoyed today, please like, please share, please subscribe. We look forward to seeing you next month on POA Talk. Mm-hmm.